Pearl is to communicate to you what the key takeaways from today have been. So from, from today's morning session have been, and the session is, as you know, about forest customary tenure in the Mekong region. So what I'm gonna do is actually just show you a couple of images and a few text. And it's everything, if you've been attentive in this morning session that you've already seen and you've already heard, because I think there's been a lot of important things that I've said. And what we need to do now is time to reflect and to really absorb. Um, first thing Natalie said uh, was that customary tenure is difficult to define and it looks different for different contexts. Um, we've also, this is an image that I took from a presentation by Hong from Vietnam in, this, uh, in the morning session. And he said that for generations, ethnic minorities have been basically almost self-sufficient um, supporting their daily livelihoods, diets, land and forest, uh, land and forest use and spiritual needs. Sorry, kids, oh, please, excuse me. Um, and uh, yeah, so diversity, but also it's about the customary, it's, it's about the traditional use, it's about the norms and the rules set within the community by different groups of people um, about their relationship with land and with the, with the resources is the way that it's been defined. So in a nutshell, I think there's a lot of cases of customary tenure that we've heard about that would come under the definition of being sustainable. The next image that I'd like to share with you is something that I took and zoomed in from um, Natalie's presentation. And here, one of the key words that I thought we should be reflecting on is actually shifting cultivation or rotational agriculture, agroforestry is the way uh, Natalie um, referred to it. This is an image from Myanmar, as I understand. Let's all reflect that actually when we talk about forest and we talk about customary in this region, we're really talking about a lot of uh, interactions through what we call shifting cultivation, rotational agroforestry, SWID and agriculture um, of in, in ways that can happen, in various ways that it can happen. A lot of it can be sustainable, and a lot of it has recently come unsustainable for various reasons. The next image that I'd like to share with you, and I've again zoomed in here, this is from Villadet from Lao, his presentation. And um, what I've done here by zooming is, is I am hoping to give you a full screen of what he was showing here. This is the map of the three forest categories in Lao, um, uh, as Villadet introduced. So the red, the light green, and the kind of the, the, the brighter green, they're all forests. And you can see on the bigger map, those dots, they are all villages. So his point was, there's a lot of overlap between existing villages and forest areas. And then he said, most communities inside forest land are under customary tenure regimes, but no clarity, and that is in the legal legislation, on formal tenure inside forests. This slide uh, took again from, from uh, Natalie, I thought was bringing to the discussion two really important words and she put a full circle going back from uh, originating from recognition, going through formalization and going back to recognition. And she told us about the full circle. Um, it, uh, we heard that in, in pre at present, many uh, countries and many circumstances, recognition is actually the reality. But in the breakout session that I participated in, we talked about self- <coughs> Um, and as well as statutory legal and uh, legal recognition. I feel it's not just three categories. I feel it's a spectrum of different types of recognition that we could talk about. And also formalization. I feel it's also a spectrum of different degrees of formalization and statutory legal recognition, full recognition, registration being at the one at one um, end of that spectrum. Um, we also heard uh, through one of some of the chat messages 
uh, an interesting comment from Cambodia I, I captured. Um, community land tenure is a, form, is a formal recognition by government. And I thought that was particularly interesting, but probably uh, a lot resonate, this resonates with a lot of people's thinking, you know, when we say uh, customary land tenure has to be formally recognized. On the other hand, I had an interesting conversation with some Lao-based colleagues the other day, and one of my colleagues uh, introduced to us that in Germany, once commute, a, a customary tenure is formalized, statutorily uh, recognized, it's no, more, it's no longer customary. So some different views on that. Um, and then Natalie also talked about formalization. It can sometimes cause problems. Um, so it's not always the answer, and it's, it's sometimes a, re, a form of recognition that we might be aiming for. So different circumstances, different answers. This is the image taken from Hong's presentation again for Vietnam, and he introduced the 2017 forestry law, and he told us um, some great things that are happening uh, through this process that gives priority of forest allocations to ethnic minorities and communities who have customs, traditions, culture, beliefs, and customary rules associated with forest use. I think that tells us that Vietnam's come a great long distance and uh, is, is, is doing a great job towards a formalization of customary tenure. Um, and this, another, another photo from Hong's presentation that, and where he emphasized uh, forest uh, community forest enterprises as being one of the, the things that's coming out of this whole process in uh, several of the communities and, and provinces in Vietnam, where it's starting to make sense, not just for their land rights, but also economically by providing them an income uh, through an enterprise that's selling certain non-forest, uh, non-timber forest products. And my final photo is this one from Natalie again, Natalie's presentation. And I put this here and I'm gonna connect it back to what um, Hong said. He says, smiles in the ethnic people. It's an important aspect and he thinks that, and he says that this is important. He's starting to see smiles uh, as a result of customary recognition. Ten. And that is it from me, but I do wanna leave you with this. Um, RMC has already introduced to us that there is a poll that's running. I understand it's running until Friday. Um, the instructions are please to take a photo of the screen because you want to capture that eight digit number in the middle of the screen uh, and go to www.menti.com to, to enter into that poll and you have to enter